The president of Farmers and Merchants Bank, my brother Henry Walker, sitting over here with me today. I get to be the boss, the CEO. But uh, when I'm to get fired, the board fires me and the president hires me back. So it's a great day. <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award uh, for Father Spitzer. I think I can sum it up in four words. No opportunity left unseized. Father Spitzer was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, May 16, 1952. He's a Catholic priest in the Jesuit order and is currently the president of the Magnus Center of Reason and Faith and the Spencer Center. The Magnus Center produces documentaries, books, high school and college courses, adult education, circular, and new media materials to show the close connection between faith and reason. The Spitzer Center produces circulation to strengthen culture, faith, and spirit, and spirit in Catholic organizations as well as nonprofit and profit organizations. Some of his highlights in his professional life. He was president of Gonzaga University from 1998 to 2009, raised 200 million and built 20 buildings which resulted in the increase of the student body during his tenure by 75%. Ethics and leadership were the key ingredients to his success, and he carried the attitude as president that if you're not building, you're falling behind. Deep down, Father Spencer is a scholar and teacher, but as president, your job is to raise money and lead through example. During his Gonzaga tenure, Father Spitzer in 2006 accepted our invitation to speak at this business and ethics conference held at Marywood. Attendance that day was about 175 compared to today's attendance of over 1,000. After 11 years, Father Spitzer retired from Gonzaga being awarded the number three basketball jersey. And you might ask, why the number three? Because each day in Mass during the homily, Father, Spirit, Father Spitzer started with, I have three points. <laughs> of course, therefore, Father Spitzer over his 11-year tenure is recognized to hold the highest three-point scoring achievement in Gonzaga history. He has made multi multiple media appearances, including Larry King Live, The Today Show, The History Channel, and multiple part BPS series, Closer to the Truth, and of course, The Hugh Hewitt Show. He's been published regularly and has given hundreds of presentations to universities, learned societies, professional societies, corporations, nonprofit organizations, and government agencies, both nationally and internationally. Within his lifetime, he founded seven major national institutes. The Magnus Center we mentioned, Ethics and Performance Institute, Spitzer Catholic Institute, Colleagues in Jesuit Business Education, Healing the Culture in Seattle. There's no measurement if it's done yet, but Healing the Culture in Seattle. University Faculty for Life at Georgetown University and a Philosophical Foundation of Phys Physics at Georgetown University. He's been a member of several boards and trustees and has produced seven television series. Let me talk extensively about his education. Or let me just say, he's a very intelligent man. <laughs> we might ask, what is the true makeup of the man who has achieved such tremendous accomplishments that allows for this Lifetime Achievement Award. So I give you the four points to a successful career of Father Spitzer. Number one, love of God. Sheer gratitude in having a personal love of God. To be grateful and happy each day, each moment. Because imagine being ungrateful and unhappy 
I say again, to be grateful and happy each day, each moment. Number two, resilient to challenge. At age 30, he had a declining vision, which required the need to be, ten to be dependent on other people. This challenge alone is considered a personal blessing by Father Spitzer. Likewise, in order to be resilient, you must be dependent on your relationship with God. Number three is humility, or what I call the declining of an ego. The hardest lesson for Father Spitzer to learn was humility. Together, we share the definition of ego in the following acronym, ego, edge God out. With humility, you have a measurement of suffering. You also measure smart and successful. Each of these measuring points complements each other and allows you to appreciate the moment of achievement. With humility, you discover there is goodness in people because people are good. Number four, he inherited this from his mother and father. Number one, have time for everyone and be connected and concerned for the little guy. Number two, everyone in your life is family. Strive to be a part of their life and allow them to be a part of your life. Sometimes the title of lifetime means you might be done with your achievements or lifetime production. Let me confirm, this is not true with Father Spitzer, as he states, no opportunity left unseized. I assure you this man is still living by these words. Please welcome Father Spitzer in recognition, in celebration of up to this moment, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, truly. Thank you. As you know, I, I am not characteristically brief, but I will be right now. Um, there are so many people in this room who deserve this award, and I am so honored that you have um, given it to me, and uh, I just count you, so many of you, as real friends in the Lord and friends in service and friends in achievement and friends who really want to make the world and the kingdom of God uh, a reality uh, here. I just, uh, I also wanted to say that, um, like so many of you, uh, I've just been fortunate uh, in my life, just blessed by God and, and uh, recognizing my need for God very early in life. Um, you know, I, I really wanted to serve him and serve his kingdom and serve his church and serve his people. And I, I know that characterizes so many of us who recognize our need and, and our blessings in, in our lives. And uh, as to echo the words of Dan, you know, I, I just, the two keys to unlocking the power of love, the two keys to unlocking happiness a real happiness, deep happiness with God and, and with one another in our lives. Uh, those two keys are number one, as he said, gratitude, and number two, humility. I'm not very good at humility, as, uh, as uh, uh, many of you know, but my vision problem is helping me with each passing day. So uh, uh, that's coming along thanks to the good Lord, and it is a blessing. But gratitude, too, I mean, I just live by that motto that Dan already uh, indicated. I think, you know, gratitude, not just to God and to family for certainly that, but gratitude to them for each day, for each kind of moment of, of different things that, that take place in our lives. As he said, I never knew a person who was grateful and unhappy. I never knew a person who was ungrateful and happy. I mean, gratitude does unlock the power of happiness, but on top of it, it unlocks the power of prayer 
It unlocks the power of relationship with others. It unlocks the power, that, that, you know, that gratitude that burns within us so that we want to pay back, we want to contribute. It's absolutely you know, transformative of our lives, and I live by it, and I've been blessed by it, uh, and been blessed and have so many reasons for it. Blessed with a great relationship with God, a great relationship with my family. So many great friends here today that I've been blessed with, our whole board of directors, and of course, by Dan, by, by uh, all of the people, Hank Evers, and the people here in this, in this room. I also want to say, too, I, I've just been blessed by uh, Joan Jacoby, who, you know, is with me and, you know, helps me. I've been blessed, too, with so many different opportunities in my life, but above all, just blessed by people who love God and a God who loves people. So thank you very, very much for giving me this. You are all deserving of it, and I just feel honored to be given an award like this by you who truly deserve it more than I. God bless you all.